Hey everyone, me Kevin here. Multiple stimulus updates today, including the fact that Democrats are still negotiating with Steve Mnuchin on the new stimulus package, though we have updates on this. The COVID death toll has now exceeded 1 million deaths worldwide. Just 14% of voters are expected to be persuaded during these election debates. And some say the Democrats updated HEROES Act contains too many poison pills. Let's hit the updates and show you exactly what's going on. Quick note, the course coupon code does end today. So if you're interested in learning everything I know about investing in stocks, real estate, and making YouTube videos, and you get all the updates and the live streams we do every morning, you can join using that code down below. All right, let's hit the updates. Here's the new flowchart for us. First thing first that I wanna do is I wanna analyze the steps, just so you know what the steps are. So that way, when you hear this from different sources, you can kind of correctly place the order in which things go. I still had comments yesterday from individuals confused as to why we should say that we should wait to vote on this bill. Uh, I, I don't want to delay the stimulus anymore, but I want to explain that in detail here so that way you know what to expect. So step number one, we got a check mark. We got our first check mark here is a proposal from house leaders. This is what we've been waiting for. This is where we can actually expect a real bill to pass. This is done. This is good. Check, check, check. Like once we get through this list, I can shave. <laughs> uh, number two, we need a verbal deal with Mnuchin. Mark Meadows isn't heavily involved in these negotiations, but Mnuchin is the representative for Donald Trump who is making this negotiation happen on, bef on behalf of Republicans. If Mnuchin and the White House agree with Nancy Pelosi on a verbal deal, that is they look at Nancy Pelosi's outline and they say, well, we wanna change to this, that, and whatever, and then they both agree to that, then Donald Trump can turn around and say, okay, we got a deal. Yo, Republicans, we need this before the election. That's the expectation. Here's the latest from Nancy Pelosi. As of yesterday, Nancy Pelosi and Mnuchin spoke at 6.30 p.m. As of today, Speaker Pelosi and Mnuchin spoke this morning at 9.30 a.m. for approximately 50 minutes. The two went over the provisions of the updated HEROES Act and agreed to speak again tomorrow. Honestly, this kind of pisses me off because I wanted to shave today. <laughs> oh well, I don't know why they gotta wait a day, but, but you know what, in fairness, it's possible that Mnuchin says, okay, I'm gonna take this to McConnell, to Trump, to Meadows, and do talking. So I, I don't expect that Mnuchin is just idly siddling, sitting around. Although quite frankly, all of our government has been idly siddled, sitting around, or at least that's what it's been feeling like, which is very, very frustrating. Now, uh, when asked about getting a COVID deal this week, Nancy Pelosi stated to the New York Times, I'm hopeful. That was this morning she said that. Also this morning, Nancy Pelosi said on MSNBC, we're in a negotiation and hopefully we will come to a bipartisan agreement that will remove all doubt that the legislation will pass and be signed by the president. That's what we want. We're trying to get that verbal deal now so that there's no doubt that this is going to pass. So verbal deal is step two. Once we get a check mark here, then we can go to a vote. So if you hear anything about voting on YouTube or the news or whatever, it means nothing unless we have a verbal deal. In fact, it's bad. See, if we do a vote before we have a verbal deal, it's gonna piss off Republicans and the White House and Democrats are gonna be seen as unwilling to, to verbally talk out a deal. So voting before we get a verbal deal, very, very bad. Number three, step number three is voting in the house after a deal. Notice I said, do not put prior to number two. Then we vote in the Senate, then the president signs, and then we expect the first checks within 14 days. That could in theory be as early as October 15th if they get things done this week, probably closer to October 20th, maybe literally right before the election. These things are gonna be rolling out in the millions is the expectation. And there is a lot of pressure from Donald Trump to make that happen. The bad in this bill. There's nothing for heroes. That was actually taken out from, uh, from the previous Heroes Act. The previous Heroes Act had heroes pay. This new one, this new updated Heroes Act, they literally cut that out. Oh yeah, and the other thing that's bad here, this little word right here, this is just because I got another email from Weeble and they're like, Kevin, make sure you tell people to use the link down below, deposit $100 and they get two free stocks up to $1,600. Apparently I didn't say that enough over the last week and now they're, they're not that happy. Sorry, anyway, uh, I do like Weeble, okay? I like their extended hours trading and, and I like their software. Uh, but anyway, this is going to upset Republicans right here. So these are the things that will upset Republicans, which are also a problem. 
Cannabis banking is in this. That's not gonna be great. Like the re Republican side has been very vocal against cannabis anything related to this COVID legislation. Democrats say, well, cannabis is a therapeutic for COVID. $600 per week in unemployment with no cap to wages. We know that Republicans want some kind of cap. They want that individuals do not make more money on unemployment than they can while they're working. So I expect some of these things to get modified. Uh, and, and that could be exactly what's being discussed in negotiations. So we might not end up seeing the full $600. We might not end up seeing cannabis banking. It depends how Republicans respond. The SALT tax cap removal is in here as well. Very, very, uh, you know, Democrat friendly, not very Republican friendly. This helps people in California, New York, and high property tax states like Texas. Stimulus checks to undocumented individuals with ITN numbers. This is going to piss off Republicans. The 2.2 trillion figure is a little bit on the high side. Remember, Donald Trump's red line is $2 trillion. And uh, Treasury Secretary Mnuchin is closer to about 1.5 trillion. Mark Meadows is open to 1.5 to 1.9. So that's kind of what we've got going on in terms of numbers right now, but we'll see the latest in negotiations when we get more updates from Mnuchin. All eyes are in Mnuchin right now. Larry Kudlow today said the true cost of this bill is closer to $2.6 trillion. And he's also, I forgot to write this in, he's also upset, he expressed this this morning, that there are so many pet projects in this sort of updated Heroes Act. Watch the uh, complete breakdown that I did yesterday, because take a look at uh, this here. This was uh, the complete breakdown that I did yesterday. This was sort of part one of it. This is where we have unemployment, the stimulus, the PPP. But take a look at these other things that they have in here. I mean, they've got money going to all of these different departments. There's a lot of money going to things like the Legal Services Corporation. You know, we've got Fish and Wildlife, Parks, Bureau of Indian Affairs, EPA grants, uh, Endowment for the Arts and the Humanities. I mean, there's a ton of extra stuff going in here. Substance abuse and mental health, uh, you know, what, whatever. And I'm not saying these things aren't needed, uh, but those are things that are somewhat upsetting uh, Republicans so far. Now, we also have some Democrats upset. For example, Representative Ro Khanna, and, uh, who's, by the way, the person who introduced the bill for $2,000 per month, uh, along with Tim Ryan, he's upset. And Elizabeth Warren is upset because there's $1.72 billion going to the Department of Defense. So can't, can't get everybody happy, I guess. Now, here are the things that are generally good, right? A second round of PPP money, generally good. If you didn't have a chance to get a PPP loan the first time around, you might have another shot at it as well. I missed this yesterday. This, so far, this is the only thing I missed. But EIDL grants, apparently there is an extra $50 billion for EIDL grants in this. I do not believe it's likely that we'll be able to double dip. However, uh, this is likely to be a new single application. So you're not doing two applications like, oh, I've got a loan application going and I've got the grant application. One's denied and one's not. Uh, they're, they're trying to simplify this and streamline this. So that way, one person tells you, okay, you got the loan, you got the grant and so on and so forth. I do not think we'll be able to double dip on that, those EIDL grants, but we'll see. We don't have details on that yet, but it does look like we've got 50 billion in here. Uh, stimulus checks, $1,200 stimulus checks and $500 to dependents, obviously could go out before the election. Schools, $205 billion. This is generally good. Food aid, likely to happen. The homeowner assistance of $21 billion, great. $50 billion for renters, great. State and local. So Democrats put in $417 billion. I wrote next to this $250 to $280 secured. What I mean by that is Mark Meadows said we believe the actual need for state and local government funding is between $250 to $280 billion, and we're okay with that. This, who knows, that could be going forward money, but I don't know how comfortable Republicans are going to be with that. So this is going to be another sort of asterisk here for uh, Republicans. Student loan deferrals for federally backed loans through September 30th, 2021. But there are also provisions to pay interest on loans for commercial, uh, like other non-federally backed loans. Stay tuned for much more detail on that. $32 billion for the airlines, money for the airports, $120 billion in restaurant grants. These are all generally uh, more agreeable items. But these are things that we want to pay attention to here because there are some things in here that it wouldn't surprise me if Democrats honestly put in knowing that Republicans were going to get pissed about them so that they, they can negotiate them out. So we're not guaranteed to get all of this. I mean, quite frankly, at this point, we're not guaranteed to get any of this. Uh, so uh, we've got our fingers crossed. Uh, but at least we have football. 
Oh wait, uh, this here says the Tennessee Titans just shut down in-person events after eight of their team members tested positive for COVID. On the election, 14% of voters say they're persuadable during these debates in terms of who to vote for or whom to vote for. Yesterday, I posted a video about what Elon Musk said. Elon Musk believes that the debates will actually either bury Joe Biden or solidify Joe Biden as the next potential president. In other words, Elon Musk believes that if Joe Biden holds his own during these debates, Joe Biden might be the next president. If he falls apart and people think he's not capable, a capable individual, Trump might get reelected. That was Elon Musk's opinion. Tonight will be the first presidential debate starting at 9 p.m. Eastern time for a 90-minute ad-free debate. On unemployment, eight states have still not yet received their first FEMA payments. Alaska, Kansas, Nebraska, Nevada, New Jersey, Oregon, Virginia, and Wisconsin are all still waiting for their first payment. It's been quite a while. Meanwhile, eight states have already depleted all of their payments, and all other states except South Dakota have already started payments. South Dakota, of course, is the only state that denied any support. New York City's positivity rate on COVID has exceeded 3% for the first time. Uh, it's been over this rate since early the summer. Not so good. The death toll from COVID has now reached 1 million worldwide. New York City bankruptcies surged 40% during the pandemic. And the central bank, the Federal Reserve, says <laughs> we're keeping rates low through 2022 and 2023. And that's a good thing. That was an update from this morning. Anyway, folks, there you have a complete update. Make sure to get those two free stocks with Weeble. Just deposit $100 so they stop emailing me. And check out the courses linked down below. Remember, you also get life insurance. You sign up in as little as five minutes. You don't have to talk to anybody. You Android pay, Apple pay for it. It's the easiest life insurance I ever signed up for in my life. Thank you so much for watching this update, folks. We will see you as more updates come down the pike. Thank you so much, and until then.